Did you get those pictures? Let me show you. All right, we're waiting on a couple of things technology-wise, and we'll be up and running in a few moments. Thanks for your patience, guys. All right, so we have Jack, and we'll read the prayer. Do you want me to start, Connor? Yes, please. 
is. Okay. Om Argen Yogi Chang Chang Ema Gesadang Pola Yatsin Chogi Nadugne Ema Jung Neje or do Kandra Mangalka Ked Ki Jesu Dakju Ki Jinji Lok Tir Shaksu So Guru Pema Sibi Foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, Fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you chief of humans were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world, to you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, 
field of ocean-like merits and good qualities. To the thus gone, I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms atoms in all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha by the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time, and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Nirya Tayami. The heart of the perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on Masavultar's mountain on Rajagriha. <clears throat> together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharadaviputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, 
Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering, should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, Tayata, gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, bodhisoha. Tayata gate gate paragate parasamgate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharadaviputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. So, hello. My name uh, is Peter, and uh, I'm uh, want to talk about some of the things that uh, gets me up in the morning. I guess um, I'm over seventy now. I'm a septuagenarian. How's it said? <laughs> Anyway, I'm still finding that our world is really awesome. And I've kind of been a science nerd for a long time. Uh, as a kid, anyway, I had a chemistry set and the encyclopedias and, and all that stuff. But uh, that kind of changed when I discovered uh, uh, the opposite sex. And they didn't have cheerleaders for piano practice. So I left that stuff behind. But that just shows how we're, we're driven, actually. We're driven by our brain hormones. As soon as my brain hormones started producing uh, uh, the proper materials, I was off to the races and trying to satisfy my good feelings. Um, 
just a, a little bit about me in the, in, the, in the Dharma. I'm probably, I consider myself Lama's oldest running project. Anyway, I have uh, took vows at Lama in 2002. So I've been around here for quite a while. And I've been doing this uh, kind of spiritual seeking for some time. I did uh, sit in the Zen tradition. I took vows with Rev Anderson in the 80s. And um, I've been doing it for some time. So uh, I guess I've got some experience and I've got some perspective on, on how things change. And uh, I guess that's what I'm going to talk about is how things change. Because um, that's all that's happening is, is it, there's some enormous changes in, in, uh, in science. Uh, and I'm not a quantum physicist or a, a neuroscientist, but uh, I do play one in my mind. So it's all in your mind, right? But uh, I was going to talk about what we've uh, found with uh, the Higgs boson, which is called the God particle. So it sounds like it's pretty uh, important anyway, although it, it took kind of 50 years to find. And I read a quote where someone of the scientists working on the project was so frustrated, he just I couldn't find the goddamn particle. And it was quoted as God particle, and that's how it got its name. But actually, According to our science, we wouldn't exist if it were not for the Higgs boson. Uh, we know the Big Bang happened, and at that time, everything was light. Essentially, from Einstein's work, we know that light is traveling at, uh, my figure runs out to 300 and some thousand, 300 and, well, Figure 300 million miles per second, 300 million meters per second, excuse me. Um, yeah, you're going to find a few. Perhaps it might. All right. We're just talking about light. So if, if that happens and we have light uh, and there was, that's the only force in the universe, the universe would collapse without this Higgs boson that we just found. It's been speculated, like I say, for a long time. And uh, after 50, almost 60 years of of searching it, it happened to uh, appear on July 4th, 2012. So that made everyone feel good that the world exists as we uh, determine it from quantum uh, quantum physics. The uh, yeah, I'm not a contemporary of Einstein. He was kind of one of my favorite guys, but he died when I was about 10. But we use his famous formula all over the place for every kind of a situation, almost. Uh, famous formulas on t-shirts, energy equals mc squared. Uh, the mass times the speed of light squared, which is a pretty big number. And that's how we determine what energy is and what mass is. And using these calculations, uh, Hubble actually convinced Einstein that the Earth and our planets are running away from each other, essentially. Uh, we're living in an expanding universe. Uh, the visualization is we're living in uh, like a loaf of raisin bread. And as the raisin bread bakes, all the raisins actually are moving away from each other. The, band, the bread expands. And this is a picture we're uh, giving of our universe now as we're moving away from everything else in the universe. Uh, at incredible speeds. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, to try to understand these kind of numbers that we have and our little minds don't, uh, we can't imagine infinity. We can't imagine the, the, the spaces and, and uh, forces that we're working with. The, uh, the big kicker here is that uh, we never did figure out what makes up 95% of the universe. As uh, Funny as that sounds, we don't know what 95% of the universe is. The cosmos is made up of what we call dark matter and dark energy. And uh, that's actually the propulsion, the propulsion that is forcing uh, the planets apart and also pulling, uh, uh, pulling things together as in gravity. So we've got a kind of a push-pull going on. But if we're made of uh, 
the same thing. Hopefully we are, and, and we're, I'm going to show that science says we are made of the same thing. That's my premise, actually, is if we're made of the same thing and we think the same way, why have we gotten ourselves in such a mess here? Um, we seem to be destroying this planet and uh, tearing our society apart with a lot of uh, unnecessary actions and thinking in, in uh, unnecessary ways. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about the 5% of the universe that we can see, uh, and that's called uh, matter, essentially. And it's called bari bariatric matter, so it reflects light, so we can see it. The, the matter that, we, uh, that is in space doesn't reflect light, it doesn't react to any kind of uh, uh, radiation, and we haven't been able to get any signals back to it. The only way we know it's there is the way it affects uh, space-time. This is one of Einstein's uh, famous uh, discoveries is the curvature of space-time and it shows up when we look at uh, our pictures of space and the curve is attributed to this, this black energy. Uh, in Einstein's time, actually, he made a bunch of mistakes uh, his most prominent uh, was the uh, the constant he had to put in to make up for this lack of energy, other energy. So when uh, Hubble showed him that the Earth, the planets were moving apart, uh, he changed it and took out his 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 constant. Now, what's interesting to me is that we're just finding this out. We've we've, we've been looking this for this a long time, and yet. Uh, in uh, times before Buddha, we had a picture of the universe uh, described uh, by Indura's web, which is just a large spider web, if you want to visualize it in that sense. And this is actually the, the way the Higgs boson or the Higgs field is, is, is described in the same sense. It's, all, it's connecting everything. Everything has to pass through this field. Everything in the field is connected. So this is the picture of the indoors net. Everything is connected. We have jewels at the center. Each jewel is connected to every other jewel. All the jewels are luminous and transparent and reflect the jewels of the entire web all the way out to the edge of infinity. Uh, this is, I wanted to put up some pictures and this shows essentially what I'm going to talk about is just like we've got this situation where we were in an infinite space that appears in uh, some studies and by some uh, translations to be a big brain. If you see these pictures, you can see that we have a picture of nebulae, which is uh, essentially stars forming and pictures of brain activity. They look just the same when we're uh, looking at this. I mean, there's it's it's like to me it's just like as above, so below. The same uh, brain that seems to function in our mind is similar to the way our computer, our our universe works. Our universe is working as a big computer, and our mind works in the same fashion. Uh, mind is firing out. 50,000 neural connections with each neural connection uh, connected in 10,000 other ways. And it uh, produces essentially 50 quadrillion chemical events in a second. It's unimaginable how fast things are moving in our body. Uh, we talk about the speed of light over distance. Uh, Einstein's favorite, one of Einstein's favorite quotes was he didn't understand spooky action over long distance. And he was uh, against quantum theory. He never uh, believed it was true. God didn't play games of chance, according to him. Uh, but with the quantum theory and, and its final revelations, uh, he was able to accept uh, some of uh, Faraday's stuff anyway. So we've got an infinite space outside and we've got seemingly an infinite space inside. 
I'm just saying that uh, the connection is where we've got to look, and that's our mind. And so we're looking at being made of the same stuff. Essentially, everything is made up of uh, chemicals, or we used to say atoms. Of course, the, uh, the joke in quantum science is don't believe atoms, they make up everything. But that's not the case anymore. We actually have broken down atoms now into quarks and leptons, and we have muons. There are so many different uh, smaller and smaller units. We believe we've gone down to the, to the bottom with the quarks now, and we believe that's the smallest unit. And finding the Higgs boson supposedly has completed the standard model of physics. But we have so many gaps, so I don't think that's going to happen. We just, we just kind of make this up for our own amusement, almost. <clears throat> so with all this uh, idea that we're made of the same stuff, we think the same way, how can we uh, create, how can we find ourselves in this predicament where we seem to be killing our world and, and uh, fighting with every... Uh, other person on the planet that doesn't seem to look like us. This is, this is a quandary, I don't know. I had to look at my own life and see how I evolved through all, a lot of these changes. And uh, I saw that I had to, uh, I kind of adapted to the way, to the way to the area I was in and, and the uh, customs of the place. I believe uh, our areas all produce similar thinking. Uh, I guess I'd use Texas as an example, but uh, we tend to uh, adapt to our culture. I know uh, I was a much rougher individual when I lived in the Old West, and I lived in Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. And uh, at that time, uh, fighting was kind of okay. Sometimes people needed to get a punch in the mouth. That was uh, an accepted behavior. It's not accepted in civilized uh, a little more civilized or evolved areas, but that's Cal uh, so that's where I came to California, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, so what do we do about this situation? If we can admit, first of all, that we are the same thing, that's a big part of the situation, part of our problem. We're always looking for differences. We've got uh, uh, well, we just got through with an administration that wanted to uh, essentially make us different, make us separate from the rest of the world. In, in, his, uh, in his philosophy, it was America first. So we've got to see that we're all living on this same dirt ball. We, don't have the, we shouldn't have these silly divisions in my mind, but we fight uh, for this dirt ball or this piece of land we seem to occupy and we call it ours. It never is ours. We don't occupy anything. We don't have anything here. It's just like we don't have a real sense of self, which is what this uh, all resolves around, how our self is either satisfied or dissatisfied, and we uh, act according to how we feel. If we study this, we see that we are the same in the same sense we're an electrochemical machine. Our body is producing these uh, uh, mechanical ways to move from chemical signals with that uh, are exchanged in our brain that tell our nervous system or our muscular systems what to do, how to act. And uh, as we see more about that, we're, as we say more about that, we're able to see that we actually control these uh, message carriers uh, in our mind ourselves. So we actually uh, are producing our own happiness. We do it accidentally, uh, but we can do it on purpose. And as we train our mind, we find that we can find a happier spot. Uh, we, we can produce dopamine and oxytocin and epinephrine, which is adrenaline, and serotonin, essentially all of the happy hormones. We have had studies that show that meditation, that this will be, be produced in meditation and in exercise. So uh, if we stop this kind of uh, society where we end up pushing and shoving so much that we're always producing 
cortisol and, and change our attitudes to where we can have a kinder, gentler life. We're going to uh, have a kinder, gentler body if we start producing these happy hormones and live in these happy hormones. Um, I know that my uh, our little pandemic has changed a lot of the the way things we uh, the way things are done now. Our, our temple's been closed, and uh, it's really affected my practice personally. Uh, I used to think that this was kind of just I could do this automatically because I've done it so long that uh, eventually things uh, become automatic. But it's not the case. I'm finding that uh, I've degenerated so much from this time not being in the temple that I've had some real experiences again of, about uh, what enlightenment is and, and how it works. But uh, if it does work, it, it's got to be work every day. It, it isn't something that just kind of happens, at least in my mind, and it certainly isn't happening to me. So. Uh, it's something we need to do. I'm hoping uh, as we turn to a red uh, zone, I guess this week, we may be able to open some, uh, I don't know what the situation is, so I shouldn't say anything. Um, anyway, so if we are designed by the cosmos and, and essentially uh, built by the cosmos, I want to see uh, we are the cosmos. We are, we are all built with the same uh, minerals and, and uh, the same elements. Uh, we contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, potassium. Uh, all these elements are put together and built by uh, our system, essentially, to replenish our body as long as we live. So uh, I'm just saying that if we are designed by the cosmos we need to actually experience that can we experience that and uh that's what we do in, in meditation i believe we experience we look behind the form we see the structure so we're always working with form and we really believe that what we see is true but in science we've shown that that's not the case that's why we have instruments our senses are so valuable Valuable is the word, all right. So uh, our senses are so weak, we have to depend on instruments, yet we run our lives with the belief that our senses are true all the time. Uh, that's not the case. We just have to create a space where we don't react to these uh, inputs and have a little space uh, to respond in a proper manner or in a more uh, civilized manner. So I'm going to just close by talking about how we're connected, how the universe has designed us. I'm talking about something we have that's created in the universe, actually, by the birth of planets or the death of stars. Essentially, the nuclear fusion process is necessary to produce iron. Iron is a mineral that uh, we need in our body to produce uh, hemoglobin. So that's necessary for our lives. And one connection that we all have together with space and our lives uh, is this connection with materials that are born in space. So we're, we're created, we're powered, and we're actually breathed by the universe. The universe creates uh, what we call atmospheric pressure. We have this pressure of 14.7 pounds pushing down uh, all over the earth. Uh, 14, 7 pounds at every square inch of the earth. And every time we create a breath by exhaling, we change our air pressure in the lungs and the universe forces more air into our lungs. So we are actually powered by the universe. So if we can start thinking in these bigger terms, perhaps we can be uh, more open to some of the changes that are available that are happening all the time. There is nothing solid here. And science is showing that we're being created, recreated, reformed all the time. Things are just uh, nothing solid. There is nothing solid here at all. No solid uh, sense of of, of uh, matter. Actually, the uh, atom is ninety nine nine percent space. We should be able to put our hands through this thing, uh, except for the small 
uh, what we call the weak force, which works in the cellular level to keep everything together. But this is supposed to be a lecture, and I, I'm sure we're all getting a little tired of that. So um, I'm going to ask if there's any questions. I don't know if I made anything uh, more clear or just muddy things up. Uh, so, but I see if anyone's listening to uh, enough to uh, provide a question. We have any questions? Like them, right? I have a question. And Susan. Doug? What? Doug? Yeah, it helps to put my microphone on. <laughs> uh, I just had a question. Uh, it's interesting when you talked about dark matter. Does that force everything away from each other or? Does gravity still keep at least our bodies together and the planets together? Yeah, essentially gravity works in the cells. And uh, we're having some problems really figuring out what gravity is because we have found a gravi gravitron uh, or we found gravity waves, but we haven't found a gravitron, an element of gravity, uh, which is what was, which the Higgs boson was, was an element of uh, connectivity. Uh, but yeah, we are being driven apart by this force of dark matter and according to, uh, science now we'll probably need this, we won't be seeing the same sky because things are moving apart. And some of the light that has started 13.8 billion years ago when the universe started won't reach us anymore as our mm -hmm. universe expands. So it may be getting lonelier in space. <laughs> space travel probably won't mean anything. <laughs> we'll never get any. It will just take, yeah, <laughs> we've got to get over this time thing somehow, but uh, things are getting farther and farther apart. It would take more time to get there yeah. if we ever get there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is just kind of like what to me is just amazing, amazing stuff that, that I didn't know about in science. And, and there's been a long gap, obviously, before I've ever read a science book. But I don't read the science texts, per se, just for this. But I, I like the, a different look on it. I've got uh, some of this material out of a book called How to Teach Physics to My Dog. And uh, I'd recommend that book, I guess, it was just a fun read. But uh, any other questions? Yeah. Isn't Ferrar? Susan Farrar. Susan Farrar. Hey, hi. Peter, it's good to see you. Well, nice um, to be seen. You know, I don't know so much as I have a question, except maybe to see if you have a similar reaction. But as I'm listening to you and as I run across similar kinds of articles and, you know, what I get this visceral um, reaction of having the rug pulled out from underneath and you're kind of floating there, you know? And so the, the value of listening to what you have been talking about and the value, one of the values of, of reading it and having some, no matter how slight my understanding might be, is a, feeling of having just complete rug pulled out from underneath and you're just floating there. And, and I'm wondering if you have sort of the same kind of response. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's invigorating and scary and, um, and quite wonderful. Do you, do you have yeah. a similar kind of exciting? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think so, and, and and that just shows that we actually make up our own world with with our brain. Our brain makes up our world, not this physical stuff. We we actually kind of see things, and and as we get more into quantum, more of this craziness comes out. And it seems to be uh, normal. We don't know what normal is, but normal is certainly more and more bizarre as we get into more comp uh, more quantum physics, being uh, in two places at once. Perhaps I mean uh, that just sounds ridiculous but it's part of the quantum uh, uh, quantum physics 
Yeah, and I got to get that book, How to Teach Physics to Your Dog. Yeah? yeah I mean, it's something like that. Um, it was one of the books in the library, and, uh, you know, I yeah. still read books. I don't have a tender, but I like the books. Uh, but certainly you can get all this stuff on uh, on Google. I mean, uh, and it's certainly a lot faster than trying to find it. So, yeah, any of the stuff. I just find myself uh, interested. It's just so amazing. So I'm just trying to share some of the uh, – mind-blowing things in my in my experience anyway it's just uh elizabeth zima has a question hi peter it's nice Hello. to see you, you i haven't are. seen yes. you in a long time and it's very nice to i know see you. it's just i really miss seeing everyone <laughs> and it's just i hope we do get together soon i'm really enjoying your talk and i have some speculative questions that I'm considering that I don't expect you to answer. But what about the Tibetan cosmology? What about the places like Sukhavati? What about those planets and Buddha fields that people enter to see Maitreya or Manjushri? Where are those in the cosmos? What does the cosmos mean? And, you know, I'm just thinking about Tibetan cosmology and the Buddhas that have existed from time immemorial before the universe, our universe, existed. So can we expand it beyond into places where the Buddhas have existed forever? Can we expand it beyond to the Buddha fields? And uh, where's, you know, can we expand it to Sakavati? Can we expand this to Maitreya, who is in the future, but actually has been in the past? I just, you know, thinking, I'll stop now, but. <laughs> no, it sounds like you're talking quantum, actually, with Maitreya in the future and the past. And we're, we're, we're working with some of that stuff, but right now all we've got is a present. So we'll see. I don't think we're going to change uh, the past too much uh, if that happens. But I don't, the, the space is just the whole idea of that. Uh, the Buddhist concept of, of the net of Indra was just showing our connectivity of everything. Everything was connected. Every way we connected, there was no, there was no real locality and there was no center. It just had everything reflected by everything else. And it just feels like just such a, a, a nice way to see everything. I, I hope we can actually visualize it enough to actually feel the connection, feel the connection in our heart. That's how I was trying to talk about how the hydrogen or the iron produced in, in the uh, formation of stars is, is really only produced in, in, uh, in space, in the, in the cosmos. We, we make iron here, but uh, pure iron is, is the only produced in space. And so it's just a special connection that we have. Each one of us needs this iron to produce the, the hemoglobin that makes the oxygen or, or allows the oxygen to work in our bloodstream. I don't know how that works either, but I'm, it's all a mystery to me, but I, I'm just, I'm just still, I'm not worried about solving the mysteries. I just enjoy living in them. So I guess that's what the change has been for me. Uh, anyway, it's kind of fun. And I'm glad to see all these uh, faces up here. Any more questions or. Okay. So I guess that's going to be it. We'll go back to, to Jack for the closing prayers. And thank you all for uh, putting up my messy mind for a while. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Peter. All right. Thank you. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chinrezi Tenzin Jatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, 
please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars, Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losandrakpa, I make request at your holy feet. Oops, gotta zoom in. May all the diseases that disturb the minds of sentient beings and which result from karma and temporary conditions, such as the harms of spirits, illness, and the elements, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May whatever sufferings arise due to life-threatening disease, which, like a butcher, leading an animal to the slaughter. Separate the body from the mind in a mere instant, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May all embodying beings remain unharmed by acute, chronic, and infectious diseases, the mere names of which can inspire the same terror as would be felt in the jaws of Yama, Lord of Death. May the 80,000 classes of harmful obstructors the 360 evil spirits that harm without warning, the 404 types of disease and so forth, never cause harm to any embodied being. May whatever sufferings arise due to disturbances in the four elements, depriving the body and mind of every pleasure, be totally pacified, and may the body and mind have radiance and power, and be endowed with long life, good health, and well-being. By the compassion of the gurus and the three jewels, the power of the dakinis, dharma protectors, and guardians, and by the strength of the infallibility of karma and its results, may these many dedications and prayers be fulfilled as soon as they are made. I guess that's it. Bye. Till next time. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for popping up on the screen. Thank you, Peter. That was amazing. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Peter. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. They're all going away bit by bit. There they go. Uh. Hey, Doug. Hi. No. It's a space.